what I'd like to do is to, to introduce um, you as, as today's speaker um, and for us to uh, start uh, the session. So, uh, yep. uh, Colonel uh, Inderjeet Singh, it's a, it's a pleasure uh, for me to introduce you as our speaker today. Uh, I know you've done a, a, a very wide-ranging uh, work in cybersecurity um, and, uh, you know, in, in uh, speech and, and uh, you know, in particular, we're very interested to hear about the work you've done in speech uh, today. And, uh, you know, we would request you, of course, that uh, you continue to be associated with us and come and talk to us um, uh, as, as many times as time would allow you to. Uh, sure. There's sure. just so much you have a uh, wealth of information you have to share with us. Uh, but rather than me continuing to talk, I think everybody is here to listen to you. So I shall hand over to you, sir. And uh, yeah. again, thank you uh, for taking the thank time. Thank you. Yeah, so it's a pleasure. So I'll share my uh, screen and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'll stop my video. I'll share my screen. That's what I'll do. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can you see me now? Can you see the screen, everyone? Yes. yes. Yeah, wonderful. So uh, good morning, everyone. And it's really a pleasure to be with you, all of you today. And um, on a Saturday and uh, talking of uh, very interesting technology, uh, you know, when we look at it and uh, why I said this is interesting technology, though you may say it's, uh, it's a voice biometrics and uh, maybe the same thing what we've been talking all these years. But uh, the way it has been, you know, uh, come across and uh, we are trying to implement uh, across uh, the different scenarios is very interesting. And uh, to give you a background uh, about myself, uh, thank you, Sarab Jodh, for, you know, uh, hold, uh, hosting me here. And I really am... Uh, you know, from the bottom of the heart, uh, grateful to you. And it's really nice with all of you who are real think tanks and the wonderful work what you're doing. So <clears throat> a word about me, I've been uh, the alumni of IIT Kharagpur and then uh, the, uh, the Symbiosis Institute of Management. And then also I was in Indian Army for 25 years where I was handling the cyber uh, of course, for a long time and uh, cyber warfare and uh, other stuff, uh, which was quite interesting and cyber intelligence. And uh, then I migrated and, you know, I moved to the corporate ladder and I'm in, I'm in care now. So I had uh, the cyber uh, in Vara technology and uh, I try to bring in all the, all the niche technologies into India. And one of the technologies which I'm trying to talk to you is about the voice uh, biometric. And uh, this is a technology which is uh, very much needed uh, today uh, when we are going through COVID and, and I will link it to the COVID. Uh, 19 and I hope everybody is safe and sound all of you all your families and uh, you know uh, how voice biometrics plays a role into your daily lives in times to come uh, how it's going to be you know kind of changing the way you do the business when I say business is that the way you make payments the way you authenticate yourself the way you you know in times to come uh, uh, get the printout of your uh, airport tickets right so that's where we really are looking in for, you know, this this technology to uh, work up. And uh, this is technology which has been there for quite some time. Uh, people have been working on it, uh, you know, and the the technology has been evolving over a period of time. You know, the accuracy rates have gone up very high, and I'll show you as to how the accuracies have changed over a period of time, uh, and the uh, the other biometric systems also. Uh, which are there so uh, during the course of my uh, talk today what i'm going to do is you know i'll give you a perspective about the biometric uh, you know technologies which are there and most of it we know uh, but definitely i will try to you know make make it look a bit better uh, to sound a bit more interesting and then i'll you know my uh, graduate on to the wise biometric and how it's being used uh, what are the use cases uh, and uh, some bit of the technology part of it uh, you know, uh, and though I'm not getting into the algorithms, uh, if anybody's interested, you know, I can take the algorithms part offline also, because uh, we have the development team which keeps working on it. And uh, definitely it will be an interest to, uh, you know, in fact, uh, offline, online both, right? Yeah, so what is happening is today, you know, the, the authentication uh, is really a very frustrating uh, thing which we are seeing today. And uh, most of the people are you know, kind of frustrated. You're being told to change your password every 15 days, one month, two months, three months. 
or your pin you need to change how many times you will remember your passwords right uh, and uh, if you are feeling it in that the authentication really, really feels frustrated as to what happened why i am not remembering it you know why uh, the uh, the things are not uh, happening properly and you know they able unable to access the important information at least once due to the failed authentication and everybody of you i am very sure you know you must have gone through that kind of uh, you know uh, trauma i will say that when you forgot something some authentication passwords and it was really much very much so uh, so important for you to uh, you know do that transaction right and uh, one of the studies which was carried out uh, internationally as uh, they said you know when they were trying to work on uh, to tell about the voice biometric they said uh, voice biometric may be a, a next level of the biometrics which is uh, interesting they would definitely go in for if it is being implemented and we are seeing that implementation change which is happening all together so you know some of the popular biometric which are available which we are knowing it you know fingerprint we all know aadhar that's the most commonly spoken about for the fingerprint your iris again aadhar uh, has been you know uh, one of the uh, key uh, databases in india uh, palm biometry is another one your finger vein is uh, another technology which is quite interesting then now over a period of time we have been all talking about know, the facial recognition right and now when we talk about the facial recognition we also talk of the voice biometric right and when we talk of any technology or of whatever we have seen you know or we i am talking uh, never it is that you know a single technology is being used so it's a mix and match of two technologies to authenticate a person right so uh, whether it's a, a, a fingerprint and iris uh, it's a, a finger vein and uh, the iris or facial recognition and the voice recognition so those are the kind of combinations really do work up and when you have these kind of you know uh, biometric systems which are there there the the biometric primarily it performs analysis of the physical signs or the behavioral traits of a person right and these are the two kind of things one is a behavioral system which are based on dynamic methods of identification or you have a psychological system which are based on the statistical method of identification and what fall in the bucket of the behavior uh, system they are the voice recognition your signature dynamics right that the the speed of pen the way you move it the expression the pressure the inclination and the keystroke dynamics what you use these are all forming in the part of the behavior uh, system right and the other part is a psychological system psychological system are you know more of biological and they mainly consist of the fingerprints the shape of your hand the palm uh, vein pattern your eye that the iris and the retina and the shape of the face for morphological analysis right uh, and also we talk of the you know when we try to authenticate a person we go in much deeper we talk of dna blood saliva urine and other things right so in the behavioral system uh, it is now gaining more momentum if you are looking at it and Uh, when we talk of uh, the psychological measurements they are usually offering a benefits of remaining more stable throughout the life of the individual so psychological systems don't change much right a uh, behavioral system are like you know uh, changing time to time but then how it's going to work up we're going to discuss that right and when we see the biometrics uh, they are increasingly being used for security because uh, they are temper proof right so we have been talking of the passwords earlier we have been talking of no passwords you know uh, passwordless uh, authentication and other stuff uh, but the biometric definitely has more advantage and uh, it's got more benefits to it right and uh, uh, it gives you accuracy it gives you the uh, guarantee of your you know when you are authenticating yourself so in contrast uh, when you have the passwords you have the kind of uh, pins which are there uh, in case they are uh, forgotten or they are stolen or forged it's a big problem whereas in case of your biometrics you know uh, they are very difficult to hack it takes more time for hacking you know uh, than hacking a password okay so, so uh, you know because password you can have a brute force method to crack it and you can uh, apply different applications to crack it whereas the biometric system say for example your facial recognition system if you need to really hack it 
think of it a kind of difficulty which you're going to uh, you know uh, have uh, here you may be asking you know the voice can be uh, it can be a synthetic voice it can be uh, it can be copied by anyone but then uh, when i cover up my later part of the talk i will tell you it it's not that easy to really you know uh, simulate the same similar kind of voice which i am trying to talk but then uh, there are these ways and means to you know identify cassettes and uh, it's difficult to attempt hacking without being noticed so you really have to get into the database so unlike passwords you change the password without being noticed right and uh, creating the fake id requires a larger amount of user data okay uh, though what we are seeing is that biometric system uh, is not much standardized so uh, there are much of uh, much which is to be done on those aspects of it uh, when we compare different you know biometric system uh, i have tried to uh, you know kind of evaluate each one of them uh, how it works uh, what are the goods and bads about each one uh, and uh, on the horizontal scale i have tried to write all the all the systems i have tried to put it four systems which are the facial iris uh, fingerprint and uh, the voice and when we talk about the accuracy part of it right uh, uh, the device which are required interference uh, attack precautions which we will need to take care of and the verification time so if you see through you know uh, the facial recognition uh, is quite prom I'm saying uh, at this point in time where we say accuracy is pretty high, but you require a camera. Uh, interference is the lighting; it may be a bad lighting, or your face is covered. And uh, if you're using a mask right now, uh, if you're covering more than 60% of your face, you know uh, those 60, 70 points which are there on your face is very difficult to you know identify. So uh, those kind of challenges are being faced. Uh, then you have hair, you're moving, your age, and other stuff which is there. So. Uh, those are the kind of interferences uh, which do happen uh, attack precautions are average because i told you that you really have to access the database uh, you know uh, of the facial recognition to you know hack into it and do some bigger manipulation of the database and the verification time is 3 uh, seconds the people are trying to improve upon the ver verification time they are getting in for the accuracy also uh, much higher accuracy of almost 95% the ffr uh, you know or the far similarly on the iris scan which is big there for quite now uh, some time with us and uh, again the accuracy has been high uh, because you, we will really were not able to crack through it but you require a camera again the interference are there and the attack precautions are very high uh, you know then you do require less than 5 seconds to generally you know uh, do the verification and then what we know is the fingerprint but in in the case of fingerprint accuracy is higher but you require a scanner you know that uh, reads to the the fingerprint uh, you know uh, architecture and then there are a lot of interferences which are there maybe a dryness age uh, deep injury uh, and dirt and uh, that's always a challenge and uh, at attack precautions are higher and less than 3 seconds is quite a faster uh, you know methodology of uh, you know doing the biometric and the one which is there is the biometric uh, the voice biometric again the accuracy is high it's it, the, the people are you know trying to make it more accurate and ai is playing a uh, you know uh, and the dnn is really playing a major role in this particular aspect of it. Uh, the interferences can be the noise uh, the background noise or the cold uh, which uh, people may catch up and uh, attack precautions are average and verification time is around 5 seconds so when we see all this uh, you know biometrics which are there uh, any single biometric or the unimodal biometric cannot be secure enough so i we cannot go in for a single biometric and say that you know we are secure so the the best to, uh, thing is to use the multimodal biometrics right to avoid the deliberate hacking so uh, it gives you a lot of uh, kind of uh, uh chances that uh, anybody trying to hack into one cannot get into the other one so uh, and the and the accuracy also you know pretty good if you're having say for example here uh, like in case of aadhaar what you have is uh, iris and the uh, and the fingerprint which is there with us two of them and uh, uh, the other part what we are talking is the facial recognition now very prominent 
and the voice biometrics okay because the fingerprint somehow uh, because of the covid uh, is no more in discussion because you can't you will uh, try to not use your finger on any of the surface uh, of the scanner right so what, where are we seeing all this uh, biometrics and uh, you may all be aware of uh, the use cases of the biometrics airport security is uh, uh, the one which we see today every uh, everyone we are seeing the facial recognition uh, uh, taking up a big lead uh, you know uh, they in fact the facial recognition along with the voice biometric i'll tell you how it can work uh, you know you can authenticate yourself right from the entry point where you can print the uh, the boarding pass to the all the gates where you are passing through even wherever you going to the vip launch you know all the accesses can be given to you right and this kind of biometric gives you a, a kind of a very free flow of movement uh, you, till the boarding gate right uh, and uh, where you can authenticate yourself uh, you know uh, very actively and uh, very smartly so those use cases really are of uh, real benefit then we are seeing a time and attendance what we are seeing you know access controls cards which are there and uh, people are really wary of uh, using the access control cards today because of the covid and the biometrics and the biometrics so most of the offices if you have gone today back uh, to the offices you know all the biometric machines they put all the tapes on it so that you know that uh, is not being used anymore right uh, then the law enforcement uh, of course the uses all the facial recognition your uh, the fingerprint system your iris uh, quite a bit and uh, in india also we seeing it you know the like uh, the ncrv has come up with a bigger project of uh, the facial recognition and uh, they they wanting to have all the database of all the you know criminals and the inmates uh, with their fingerprint and the dna and uh, the kind of the facial recognition also uh then you have the access control uh, that's pretty common uh it, like uh, you have all the 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 stadiums the cricket stadiums and uh, the football stadiums where if you have the access control system uh, the the facial and maybe the voice the facial recognition of course is one of the best uh, option where you just uh, show your face and within 6 seconds uh, if you are uh, you are okay uh, it will check on the database and you know give you the Uh, the indication that go ahead okay this is without touching anything without you know uh, uh, looking at anything or you know putting your finger uh, on any of the stuff so uh, that is a pretty nice uh, use case of the facial recognition then is the banking now uh, when you talk of the banking so uh, we have been seeing you know as in as and when whenever we go to the call center you know we have a chance of the identity theft uh, customers now looking for the banks with biometric authentication so what they are trying to do is uh, you also you would have seen in india now what we are trying to do is the ekyc we are trying to have a video call and uh, the video recognition system and uh, something more which uh, the other banks internationally they have gone in uh, they have gone in for uh, the voice biometrics uh, to name a couple of them is the city bank the hsbc even uh, indian uh, icici uh, they tied up uh, not the full uh, implementation of uh, voice biometric they tied up with the uh, the alexa right for giving you the details of uh, your bank if you are being authenticated by your voice so that is there then you know uh, some welfare uh, delivery by the government now what what is happening is that everybody is got a aadhar card and uh, we don't have a national ration cards right uh, how do we really authenticate a uh, person that uh, he's got the ration uh, like what we seeing in uh, covid situation uh, it's a bigger problem to authenticate those people right so uh, had we got the facial recognition database or the voice biometric database right so uh, it would have been much easier to authenticate those people uh, using uh, those uh, biometric systems something more so uh, most of the countries do have their uh, you know voter registrations based on the voice biometric or the facial recognition uh, and also the pensions like uh, most of the uh, the elders who are there they cannot uh, go to the bank and uh, every year on 1st of november they really have to uh, struggle to reach to the bank to sign the document they are alive right so uh, that's a very tedious process even for the banks and the people 
and what happens if the the elderly guy dies uh, in the month of december itself so how do you really authenticate so he will keep getting the pension for next one year without even the bank or the government even knowing it so if they they have not they have not informed it so uh, if we have a combination of voice voice biometric right uh, that uh, will give a real uh, big push to this kind of uh, system so while we are talking of all these use cases uh, it's not uh, one shoe fit all model uh, it's kind of a combination of different biometrics which we have to use them right and then we also do have uh, for the military we uh, for the enemy or uh, ally identification we use it uh, your healthcare is now picking up right when we talk of the telemedicine you know we are trying to authenticate people so facial recognition and the voice recognition also plays a major role for them right uh, your commercial applications uh, which are there so in effect Uh, there are so many uh, applications which have come up, and on the biometrics which I am trying to talk, always think that you are going to be using in a combination. No single biometric system is like the full proof which I have already told you. And why we say it's a uh, you know the uni model model is not the best uh, model. It's a multi-modal model uh, which combines several biometric sources to increase security and the equity. Right. and usually you require two biometric credentials for identification such as face and fingerprint in front of one or face and voice now we are talking of voice and uh, you know uh, they can overcome the limitations commonly encountered in a unimodal model right and uh, the use of several biometric feature in combination uh, are the best option uh, and they reduce the error rate considerably right so uh, the big question you will say that uh, can the biometric be faked and the answer is yes right we have been seeing uh, all these years uh, with the with the kind of cameras which have come up uh, they were able to uh, you know have that there was a galaxy uh, s10 camera uh, with a ultra uh, fingerprint sensor right? right and it was able to click the the photographs of your hand and you know simulate those kind of uh, fingerprints right and they could do it Uh, similarly you had uh, the apple face id which was cracked using a mask with a 3d printer okay and the, there have been flaws in the system throughout and uh, some of the android devices can be tricked with a photo including devices from the largest manufacturers such as uh, samsung motorola sony and huawei so uh, those those are the kind of things they are there they can be faked but the data cannot be lost right so you have to be uh, uh, you know aware of this particular aspect faking is one thing you know you are trying to cheat the system for some time but uh, you are not able to uh, you know take out the data or change the information what you are able to do using cracking your passwords and the pen right so uh, the covid has brought in a new challenge in the biometric system uh, and the complete biometric ecosystem has you know uh, now looking in for something different from what i have been saying you know so something which is uh, uh, of concern so all of the four biometric systems which i spoke of iris and uh, kind of you know uh, the fingerprint are a challenge okay there are no more fingerprints no more thumb scanning uh, you can do it and the way uh, the corona virus is i think another one to two years uh, we are going to be in this new normal and uh, this fingerprint you know database uh, how it effective it would be after two years we really don't know right and access, similarly the access cards which are there right and why i said uh, uh, you know the kind of uh, iris and uh, the fingerprint because for facial recognition you can use it in a normal sense you can use your normal uh, mobile camera to identify uh, authenticate you you can also use a normal mobile uh, phone to authenticate your voice right so what we are seeing today when i when i am being saying that we are seeing a new normal and the new biometric system uh, is going to be in place so some, there was a study which was being done uh, very recently and they said you know uh, the facial recognition market 
is going to really grow very high to almost 15.1 billion right and facial and the voice biometric will reset a new normal you know as we go forward uh, with the covid thing right and these are going to be redefined redesigned so uh, the nest uh, nist uh, you know the, they have come up with the standards in 2016 and 18 uh you know and they have been saying that uh, while we talk of the multi factor authentication i have not touched upon the point of multi factor authentication but we can talk of it so they said the sms based two factor authentication is not secure and should be done away with so if that be the situation you are being left with uh, only the biometrics that's a combination of any of the unimodals which i spoke of and this is how the the overall or uh, you know market which looks for the voice biometric uh, and the and the speech recognition so when we were there in 2018 or 20 you know the market started to you know get on to 6.9 billion and what we are seeing uh, the voice uh, biometric market in 2026 is 28.3 billion so it's a huge market potential so we we are just sitting in very nascent stage of the biometric uh, when it, when it comes to the overall market space so it's a huge potential the people who are really working in this area of uh, you know ai and uh, and deep learning neural networks so this is a, pot- a potential area where they can develop uh, the the biometric system because most of the uh, the effort which i have seen by a lot of uh, the peer groups uh, it was for the facial recognition for the last couple of years now but definitely uh, in india i have not seen uh, much of uh, traction as regard the voice biometric system is concerned but then then this is the area uh, which can be worked upon and uh, one has to really think of and when it comes to the applications you know these are the kind of applications what we see whether it's your healthcare whether it's automotive whether it's government your retail e-commerce system your travel and hospitality uh, your legal system right it and telecommunication so every aspect and and also the the bfs the banking and the finance which will be a major chunk all together right so those are the areas where uh, this biometric will be a role what we see so uh, some bit of the uh, disadvantages uh, which i have told uh, about the existing system i'll just you know uh, recapitulate those points so uh, the existing system is is about about what you know right and what you know is the password that's the otp your personal information name id number you know uh, date of birth your transactional information so that's what you uh, everybody knows right and we keep on either we uh, memorize it or we put it in uh, some piece of paper but then it's easy to forget and data can be accessed by others you know there are a lot of uh, even uh, in the browsers you find some of the applications which say okay we'll safeguard your data or, or your password but how safe are those you know we uh, we have to really think of and what you have today is your security tokens you have passports you have the you know cards the access card right and you have the rfid they again easy to lose and things can be stolen right so it's a kind of situation where comfort versus security is a challenge and in a in a situation where we are uh, you know being put on put to test by so many hackers you know they try to change your passwords they try to steal your uh, credit card information and there are threat intelligence tools which are available you will be surprised i was you know seeing that one other threat intelligence tool was able to give the detail of the credit card with its cvv with the name of the person uh, with the number of a person and it also was showing the command and control center where that you know hacker was operating from so very precarious situation when it comes to the present system of authentication so we have to have a, a kind of a very balanced approach of uh, comfort versus security and how we are going to do that we will we'll be just doing it and for that we are uh, you know telling you about the voice biometric and uh, the question would be why voice we being you know talking all these years uh, from you know ages we are using voice and uh, the state of voice today is that 
uh, 60% of people believe that voice assistant adds to convenience to their daily life right and everybody seeing it you have alexa you have you know siri and uh, you know google assistant everybody is using and as we are going ahead uh, the, all the google searches you know on the mobile phones people are using uh, kind of voice driven and, and voice uh, uh, is quite uh, being used by all these browsers so the mozilla also went in for the com uh, the voice platform altogether and 72% of people who own smart speakers say the device are part of their daily life right and that's the fact wherever uh, you know those uh, electors are there uh, they are part of the daily life they keep on com uh, communicating and you know uh, talking to alexa most often and what we are seeing is that the smart speaker market has grown almost you know 300% in 2019 and more than 100 million alexa devices have been sold right so we are we are seeing lot of uh, changes happening in the voice segment and the question which again we like to ask why voice right uh, but the but the solution is that voice is so natural to us it's a intuitive way to communicate we always do that and all you need to do is start talking and once we once we start talking we'll try and authenticate okay and voice is unique and it's a universal password so you really don't have to remember anything right and voice serves as a key to any service in everyday life right and it's very secure and advanced techniques in speaker recognition technology in ai is providing secure personalized and digital self service to you and that's what you are seeing today uh, where you have the, the the alexa and and the siri you started getting quite a customized replies to you right and voice recognition technology is actually easier than other biometric models you do you know you know don't need to go anywhere or touch anything to verify your biometric authentication right so some bit of confusion which always comes up and uh, that's what uh, really when when uh, whenever i give a talk so there's a uh, there's a question as to the difference between the the speech recognition and the voice recognition so that's a very common question because uh, we've been talking of the speech recognition for quite some years and the voice recognition for quite some years so uh, in fact we had the uh, the voice converters way back in you know 1998 uh, onwards we did there and these are the terms which are being used interchangeably but however they are both completely different right so you have to understand the difference between the voice recognition of the speech recognition and the purpose of the speech recognition is to arrive at the words that have been spoken okay there's a therefore uh, a speech recognition program strips away your personal information such as extent to detect words right and the speech recognition software programs are generally used for dictation transcribing and using a computer hands free you know you've been seeing the medical transcription which was quite in business uh, for quite some time and also you are seeing automated you know customer service and what you're doing when you're talking about the voice recognition it aims at recognizing the person speaking the words right rather than the words themselves that's the difference you know you were trying to understand the words when you're doing the speech recognition and you are trying to understand the person behind the words when you are doing the voice recognition okay and the voice recognition uh, primarily the software which are there uh, they disregard the language uh, and the voice recognition also can be called the speaker recognition right the, so that's also a terminology which is being used and its unique attribute of each person is just like your fingerprint or iris so uh, it's very unique to each and every one so it doesn't change all together it all depends on your individual respiration your soft tissue cavity and specific mouth and jaw movement that produce a voice a pattern with a distinctive pitch dynamic intensity and all together forming an individual voice print so every person whenever you are speaking you have a different voice print that gets created the way you open your mouth the way your jaw movement takes place how your soft tissue move up, and to tell you hey itself there are almost 70 to 100 points 
when we identify a person in a uh, in a right? like in a facial recognition you all know there we talk of almost 60 to 100 points you know is a good software is around 80 to 90 similarly when we talk about voice recognition right it is about almost 100 points which we try to identify that's what we're trying to train the model for uh, for the voice recognition and there are two methods uh, how we do the voice authentication part of it one is a text independent and other one is the text dependent right and when we talk of the text independent part so it is like you really don't know what you're going to be talking so it is authentication is performed by analyzing any speech content delivered by the user so you just like the way i am talking it's a text independent kind of model right and the the, the software will try analyze me when i give you know the voice print uh, analysis and uh, try to you know uh, make a profile of mine whereas in a text dependent what you try to do is you try to speak a very fixed or randomized or unique passphrase which has been given to you and you repeat that and based on you know uh, what we have been talking uh, the complete voice print has been created so these are the two methods which are being used in the market today uh, in the in the software today for uh, you know for the voice biometric so one thing which we have to understand is that uh, text independent and language independent verification is done by the voice and text, text dependent verification is done by the static, uh, static passphrases and they are all language independent okay and the dynamic passphrases you know you can go in for again any indian language uh, kind of thing uh, anything uh, which is there so uh, the other thing which we try to do in the voice biometric is that we try to identify the live detection so that you know uh, we try to cancel out all the all the noise which is there behind and uh, it acts as a safeguard against someone playing a recording of your voice or masquerade as you because most of the time you'll say okay what's so great about the voice biometric i'll record the same voice but now the voice biometric systems have become pretty you know intelligent in that way they're able to detect the voice uh, you know liveness detection they're able to detect the geolocation as well right so those are the kind of things which are there then you have the anti-spoofing detection so uh, it is against all your synthesis uh, you know no, uh, uh, voice which you try to create or your replay attacks which you want to do it then you have the noise cancellation uh, which is uh, part of the you know the solutions uh, what have been developed and of course the identification and like i already told you that uh, when you do uh, when you create a voice id right uh, you looking for 100 identifiers right it's not one two three it's almost 100 identifier of your speech of your with the way you talk such as accent your pronunciation your cadence your size of length your vocal tract roll of tongue nasal cavity which can be used to verify future logins by the customer so it's not very easy what you saw that you know uh, it can be you know tracked or anybody can poop it through. so the voice biometric systems uh, first process the voice input to exact statistics that are specific to a speaker then it builds a statistical model which is called a voice print so that's what it does okay so we whenever we have a text independent or text dependent uh, you know kind of inputs uh, uh, onboarding process so you try to create a voice print and to verify a new input against the uh, enrolled voice same process is repeated again and again and till the time we obtain a matching pattern okay uh, and the uh, the accuracy depends on you know uh, how the neural network really work harder okay and the voice inputs uh, do include the statistics that relate to the way the airflow from the lungs to the mouth moves when the person is talking and more precisely how this airflow is affected by the shape of your vocal fry so these are the kind of things you know or details what we are trying to do it when we are getting into the voice biometric and the voice biometric system relates closely to the physical characteristics of the speaker's voice track so whatever we are creating 
is very close to the vocal tract of the individual and they are being designed the the biometric engines are being designed to deal with the variability factor so if a user has got a cold or the, there's a, some difference in the sound which we are, we are seeing the, the advanced biometric engine you know which is being developed using the neural network uh, will sound just the same okay and uh, there's a lot of ai which gets into it and the error rate of such systems you know uh, they are being brought down to 2% of the snr of 10 db or higher you know the error rates are very less and we are seeing lot of accuracy which is coming up into the systems today so uh, the advantages again to uh, recapitulate as to uh, what are the advantages what you get no sensors are required various solutions are uh, available they are cheap they are comfortable and they are natural okay so that's the kind of thing uh, which you give it uh, when you talk of the voice recognition and it's a kind of text dependent independent and hybrid which is there so some bit of it as to how it works for uh, you know identifying the voice print so this is the model what we have uh, you have a user you know where you where you, it gives you the input speech and you do the feature extraction from the speech and based on that you create a speaker model and an imposter model also because uh, in case you find that this is being spoofed or there's a impersonation attack or uh, there's a replay attack so it really does take an action also and based on that it gives you a decision whether to accept or reject a particular human or the user so this is where you have the waveforms and on the x axis you have the time and uh, on the y you have the frequency so you know what is being used is that uh, in the case of the uh, dependent system we try to use the hidden markov model right and that is where we use uh, the algorithm and in the case of the text independent we use the vector quantization model uh, for you know usage so how it's been done when you have the two same uh, two waveforms of the same word you know you are trying to speak out and uh, what you see is the samples which are there are different in both the cases if you look at it this sample and this sample is different okay whereas when you have the frequency time slot okay and you take the sample of the same word right uh, which are being spoken uh, with a uh, event in a given interval and you see that both the samples are almost similar okay this is how you apply the models of uh, the hidden markov and the, and the vector quantization of the gaussian model which is there so when you do the speaker identification what you are trying to do is you allow to perform a fast one is to one speaker verification one is to n speaker verification and n is to m speaker verification so just see the kind of sampling what you are trying to do in so much of sample you are trying to take out the who's the person who's uh, you know uh, your user right and you are trying to do uh, all the extend text channel uh, independence and all so that is the way we actually work on the back end side of the voice bandwidth the deep neural networks deep learning and uh, to generate highly representative mathematical model of human voice called the voice print offering extremely high speaker recognition accuracy right and when it comes to your you know input format you know so what formats we looking for is in in the data base we going for the dot wave or raw formats which are there and the enrollment time for the text independent and the text dependent is around you know uh, it's the speech length for enrollment is on 20 plus second and speech length for identification is pretty less that only 7 plus second can be shorter of a collaboration and how you storing the database at the output format which is there you keep it in the xml and the json format right so this is how your you know the outputs and the inputs 
which are there so something again which i just want to touch upon the uh, the algorithms which are being used uh, for the text dependent they are the hidden markov model which has been used uh, to provide a statistical representation of the sound produced by the individual that's what has been used and when it comes to the text independent application we are trying to do the, the vector quantization or we use the gaussian mixture model right for a state mapping model closely related to it right so this is the algorithm what we primarily use to you know model the the speaker and what we get is that whenever we are doing the voice biometric it's done in a real time right and this is how when a speaker starts talking we try to analyze it using the engine and uh, we are able to achieve uh, accuracy of almost 94% and this is you know keeps on improving uh, you know over a period of time and what practically happens is that the, as you start speaking the voice samples to the microphone that gets processed by the voice library which is being created and the library reads the audio transforms and converts it and then transmits the biometric to the dnn okay and feature vector is formed thereafter which takes into account such biometric as uh, timbre annotation tempo pitch and other characteristics that the neural network was trained to respond to and then we are able to analyze and verify person in the real time right and this is uh, already i have covered up I, i'll fly this slide so i'll not touch upon it uh, we are talking of all the call centers where we really can go in for the voice biometric uh, your financial services bpos your bank is a huge uh, potential for these financial services in times to come your healthcare system is another potential market the government services the one which i told you the pension uh, and your uh, other services the aadhar card your voter card are uh, the potential you know market for uh, the voice biometric identity as a service itself is a huge market and while we are you know in covid the bigger challenge today is to identify students who are, who are studying from home and we really don't know how to identify a, a student for examination because we don't have any kind of data we can't because he cannot come to the college for giving his fingerprint uh, we don't have the facial recognition data uh, you know we don't have the iris so how how, how do we really identify so the voice biometric uh, database can be created and can be used to authenticate uh, the student you know uh, for the examinations altogether and, and also for the enrollment part so this is a huge potential which when i was saying that the voice biometric has got a potential in times to come so some of the advantages of the voice biometric is the low cost of implementation uh, your ease of uh, use Uh, which is there and the user of doctrine is also uh, very high a small child can be uh, made to do the voice biometric a old person can be made to do the voice biometric he, wherever he is sitting you know and it can be authenticated remotely uh, you really don't need to be present uh, physically to be authenticated and you can you know enroll a person very easily and you can authenticate very fast so uh, that's how Uh, we are able to you know use that authentication methodology and some bit of the features which are there it's a hassle free authentication and uh, then you have the uh, prevention of frauds and impersonation attacks like i told you that uh, there are almost 100 parameters which are available of an individual's voice so uh, you can identify a person quite close to what he is it's a easy deployment and low cost of maintenance so uh, any anywhere you have to do it just a software which you need to uh, you know install in your server and thereafter you know you can utilize it and uh, it leverages on the customer satisfaction i will just show you how customer gets you know irritated when it comes to you know authentication uh, even you would have also felt it when you're going to any bank uh, bpo or call center then it's got a faster uh, uh, roi so this is the biometric system which i was trying to recommend uh, a combination of voice and uh, the facial uh, which is a multimodal combination which allows 
to achieve greater accuracy and security uh, you know uh, for any user and uh, uh, these are the kind of applications for the bank in particular uh, for the mobile app application authentication your call center authentication your automate your password reset using the voice biometric your high risk credit card transactions can be done using the voice biometric your web payments can be done using the voice biometric and employee to employ id validations can be done using the you know the voice biometric so there are lots of use cases in the banking sector itself and uh, these are the kind of banks which have already implemented uh, barclays is uh, the, the one who is being quite uh, front runner when we talk of the technology wise uh, they have uh, you know uh, been been using it for quite some time and they said the password will be no longer be needed as every human has a unique voice then is the anz hsbc your icici and uh, and the city bank so uh, they are the one who are already implementing it uh, you know as it as a technology right so so how it happens when we are trying to talk the voice and the face biometric uh, in any application and how it happens is that uh you know even when you are accessing your web pages or the or the browser solution which is there is you know you can access using your facial recognition and the voice to access your key database or your secured database you know uh, problem today is what you are trying to save uh your your database is just by the passwords but if you have this kind of combination wherever your files are stored wherever your search work is stored this combination would be a very you know interesting combination for uh, you to safeguard your data and once you authenticate yourself with your voice and your face you know if you are a, a valid customer uh, go through that uh, the voice as a facial engine you get the access otherwise you are being denied that you know kind of access so what it actually gives it this give a accuracy of almost the false uh, acceptance is under 1% 0.1% and false uh, false rejection is around 1% so that's pretty a kind of you uh, i'll say uh, accurate uh, kind of uh, output which it gives you if you're using both these you know biometrics all together and the time taken is pretty less it's around 2 to 3 seconds Things to complete and are very simple to enroll. Uh, you can use, uh, uh, you know, to get online. You have to just use your uh, microphone or camera uh, that provides the excellent uh, facial images and the voice print. So uh, that you can use it, and the multi-biometric data collection uh, would be pretty interesting uh, use case for everyone to authenticate online, right? So when we talk of the call centers and the contact centers, here you require a quite a you know uh, accuracy which everybody is looking on for and today whenever you are going into any call center or uh, you know bpo if you give a call uh, the questions start from you know all those funny questions keep coming what's your name your date of birth your you know credit card number your personal details till the time you don't give them the lady or the, the gentleman who's there will never start talking right but if you're using the voice biometric uh, in the contact center it gives you ease of uh, the uh, ease and speed of service and also it's a very convenient way for the verification and gives a very high safety if you are using that kind of you know uh, uh, application so what happens is you have uh, you know any call center uh, what it does is it either has a tech independent or tech dependent You know, verification system to enroll uh, enroll yourself right once you have done that enrollment part okay uh, thereafter it does the voice biometric uh, you know engine runs at the back end whenever a caller calls up or you whenever you call up any caller and you can you know verify any user uh, in a real time right so the moment you start telling your name number here that voice voice biometric engine which starts working uh it gives you the uh, the decision whether this person the one who's calling up is you know a valid user or not and the agents which are there will validate validate the human uh, the user 
so it gives you a very high level of security it gives you a versatility uh, and it can be integrated with the other solutions which are there it has a lot of flexibility and it is adaptable for both the things you know for incoming calls for the outgoing call and the efficiency is very high as compared to a normal bpo caller right or the the person who's sitting in the in the call center so with this kind of efficiency uh, you know uh, we'll get better results and nobody can get into the systems uh, as a as a uh, nefarious guy who's there so one of the use case which we saw uh, where uh, there were almost uh, 5000 feet uh, bpo which was being used and uh, they were able to have the roi you know uh, pretty high and uh, it what happens is basically when a traditional system like i told you to start from your hello to name to date of birth to id to your secret word when it comes to your voice biometric once you start talking at the date of birth there's a client request is being processed so this time is generally is around 90 seconds which is taken and when you talk off the time taken with the voice biometric system you know it gets uh, you know uh, reduced to just 30 seconds and the customer satisfaction you know level also goes up pretty high and in this case it went to almost 66% and also they save the revenue uh, both of it so uh, whenever using any biometric system uh, the advantage is that one is roi in terms of the customer satisfaction second in terms of the roi is in terms of the money so you save lot of money uh, from the the people who are calling now right so this is the one i'll just cover up so what it does is that uh, when you having a uh, free speech so uh, you have the 100 100 biometric statistics of voice which are being identified and these are all you know kind of 100% language independent so any language which you speak doesn't make a difference in case of indian vernacular language even if you are speaking really not going to make a, a you know a problem for us and with this biometric statistics we are able to identify even with the free speech you know uh, whether that is he is a valid user or not right so this is the kind of uh, the logic which uh, really works and the logic what it does is that uh, you know there are the dsp modules which are there uh, whenever a caller is speaking you know it separates the speech from the non speech and it also converts the raw waveform into the frequency to bin representation and it performs the windowing scaling filtering and the data compression and while this agent is working here right uh, it, it really verifies uh, with the other patterns which are available whether the person is valid or not and uh, he who he is able to you know kind of uh, uh, check that if the person is to be put in blacklist or whitelist okay so that is what uh, this agent does to give you the example of uh, the uh, the kind of uh, just second i think the video is not working here no problem i'll just show you practically this video was trying to show that you know Uh, when we are in the first instance that uh, when we are calling trying to call the call center it takes almost 1 hour 1 minute and 30 seconds to verify a particular user whereas in case you have a voice agent which is working right uh, it will be just uh, 30 seconds to identify any user having yeah can you hear the voice i think no uh, we can't hear so voice. okay i have already i think told you about this video but so this is primarily about uh, two schools of thought where first in first case you ask the uh, password your date of birth okay you are really now working to think as to what details are to be given there after your card number please now you really bite your nails to give your card number to the call center your id details right again you have to really remember those you cannot you know go do with that your secret word really have to remember what it is 
and then she asks you what's the nature of the fall so you have wasted one hour 30 one minute and 30 seconds uh, in this case whereas when it comes to the voice biometric and the voice prints are unique uh, this is how it really happens is that uh, the speaker has been identified earlier we had around 70 70 characters now our solution has more than 100 characters uh, characteristics all together to identify a person so the moment the you know a person comes in the date of birth and the agent is working in the back end right and uh, his name and he say the 30 seconds it says thank you uh, and uh, now you tell me what's the question which you have so this is a kind of uh, uh, thing where we are finding it's very uh, it's really you know kind of helping lot of organizations to uh, have a better roi so the safety and control is pretty high the time factor what i try to show is 1 1 1 minute and 30 seconds to just you know 30 seconds the customer experience is uh, very important and we always talk about the cx okay so uh, the cx is the most important part of it now uh, you know some bit of uh, I, i'll talk of the the cyber attacks which people may be think, uh, thinking of because the cyber security is uh, so very important for any biometric system uh, and uh, the type of frauds which are happening uh, in any contact center for that matter is the fraud or fraudster who pretend to be clients a relative is calling for a client a fraudster uh, role uh, you know uh, stole client ids uh, a passport and took a loan from client's name and also the uncredited employees you know calling for a legal entity so there there, there n number these are only four examples which i have to try to quote but there n number of examples uh, of people who try to you know call the contact centers every day which we are seeing and uh, to just to refresh your memories of uh, the spoofing attack uh, which we all talk of and uh, the spoofing attack is uh, the attack whereby an imposter attempts to manipulate a biometric system by masquerading uh, as another enrolled person right so which we think is very easy right now you know we we really don't have to struggle to do to get through the call center you know guys and the biggest challenge in the voice biometric is the ability of the bad actor uh, actor to replicate a person's voice right so really you can't replicate anybody's voice if you are if you are in there you have to be in there right and uh, uh, that's how the the voice really works up so some of the attacks which uh, play up in uh, the uh, in the call contact center are, are the replay attacks you know the cut and paste uh, kind of audio uh, which we try to do uh, you have the professional actors who try to mimic others and uh, that's what we've been seeing all through uh, the life you know the, all those mimicries which are being there by the professional actors then you have the nasalization uh, tempering that's the uh, text to speech synthesis and synthetic voice uh, which gets created and the voice conversion sometimes you know uh, we trying to have a robo talking in uh, lieu of us so those are the kind of spoofing methods uh, which are being used but the algorithms which have been created especially to guard against all this cause sir are quite phenomenal so what we practically use is that uh, they're able to refute Uh, the attempt of infiltration by utilizing uh, distinct vocal qualities unique to every individual such as accent pronunciation uh, speech rate tone and pitch so the 100 points what we have been talking of the 100 characteristics you know uh, that are being harnessed by the ai engine uh, and the nlu which is there uh, in the engine which has been implemented uh, which will able to authenticate uh, the individual uh, to a much higher degree of accuracy making voice biometrics more reasonably viable fingerprint uh, or the voice print uh, for the future so that is how we are you know trying to sort all these kind of fraudster coming on to uh, the, the you know the voice library of ours so when whenever a, a fraudster practically calls uh, so the engine which i just told you which is there uh, you know it's quite active and uh, it, whenever there is a caller who says that Uh, i am the one who's uh, who's been calling up there's a there's a, another engine which was the one which i was studying in the voice library you also have a library which create which have been created 
of the all the blacklisted guys right we keep on creating a list of all the blacklisted people in the fraud database uh, or which is online and offline mode so we keep a list of that we you know match uh, with that particular database uh, as this particular user is calling up right and uh, uh, if it is not uh, the database is not matching so we actually you know block him and also uh, uh, update the law enforcement agencies for that matter so this is what is the percentage that we have put it for any uh, you know blacklist uh, agent which works up it's on 34% if is not matching uh, below 34% so uh, we say that uh, if he is a blacklisted guy and uh, thereafter you know uh, it will stop the discussions beyond a particular point and uh, this is how we identify all the fraudsters in the network so the future of voice and the face biometrics is pretty uh, promising what we are seeing uh, it's really going to uh, strengthen uh, the authentication system with the multimodal biometric uh, it's more accurate and uh, convenient identification based on the physical time and it is quite interesting when we are you know uh, for giving the user experience uh, and the customer experience uh, uh, that's quite high with the voice biometric so with this i have uh, come to the end so uh, i'll take on the questions and as a parting remark there are no pins to remember no passwords to forget so uh, that is where the sense of uh, you know the voice biometric is that's great thank you so much sir uh, that was very interesting uh, there are a number of questions that have been asked in the chat window um, which uh, you know if i summarize them all kind of are looking at uh, the competing uh, requirements of such a system right one where you're dealing with people who may uh, be the right person who's calling in but has a cold and or is suffering from some uh, illness and therefore or stress and therefore his voice is changed Yes. Time. So this is a, this is this is a very common question. I will just tell you. Yeah. So uh, the engine which is there, it's is guarding against your common cold and cough. Yeah. Right. Right. So uh, so so when I told you the NLU which is uh, against all uh, which is being used mm -hmm. uh, and the deep neural network, this is taking care of all the you know eventualities of cough and cold. Right. Okay, so you're you're kind of taking into account certain known kind of variations in the voice. Yes, this is the most common. And second is you know the common question which I always get is uh, you know uh, if it is being a recorded voice. So uh, that is again like we have the live detection uh, right. which has been incorporated, and also the the noise cancellations of uh, like if I am talking and if my recorded uh, voice is recorded and I'm playing at the same pitch, you know uh, the background noises which are playing behind. Uh, they are being identified by the uh, algorithm. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, another question uh, asked by Umar Farooq is, uh, you know, he, I guess at a feature level, uh, you uh, are you using mel frequency uh, uh, steps? So forward? these are yes. So these are some of the algorithms what are being used as part of the Varga uh, model. Right. Right. So we are doing that. Because uh, uh, you know, I have only listed out. I have practically listed out only the algorithms which are. The most common one, which we are, which everybody understands. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are some, uh, there are some of the uh, algorithms which are quite proprietary to us, which uh, we created and have been part of the complete, you know, uh, biometric community. Great. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, now, one of the things that people often talk about with deep learning is the fact that, oh, you know, uh, you don't need to do any feature extraction because the neural network itself can do. Uh, a lot of that for you, uh, but from what you were talking about, it seemed like there was definitely a, a set of features that you're extracting to identify each of these different aspects. Yes, and in yes, we are doing that. So we are so doing that. Still, you know, what was considered to be old hat, which was feature uh, engineering uh, in machine learning, uh, you see, still see that as a as an important feature of what so, so 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 practically, you know, we the, it's a kind of. Uh, the algorithm which we are trying to uh, get to maximum accuracy for any user to uh, reach. Mm -hmm. So uh, though it's an old hat, but that technology has proven us uh, when we are having in the case of the text independent and the text dependent uh, enrollment models, what we are trying to do. Because what happens is like uh, if a person, uh, I, I can't really tell a person to 
not be in a metro uh, and uh, try to enroll. You know, he can be in a metro or he can be in a station or an airport uh, mm-hmm. where there'll be all uh, uh, different kind of noise levels which are going to be there. How do I need to really, you know, identify uh, to that accuracy? Right, right, yeah. Uh, I think that's great because I mean, one of the things that, uh, you know, deep learning uh, and more the marketing around deep learning is to say that, uh, you know, we can actually replace data scientists by, by neural networks and, and automation. Uh, right. And that's why I want to bring up this fact that, you know, a lot of the, this feature engineering you're talking about is the, the creation of that pipeline that goes from the raw data to the full yes. model. So, so, practic- so practically, you know, the basics are still the same. Yeah. We incorporate all the, the DNN on top of it. Right, right. Great. And that is why, that is how we are like, you know, making the system more intelligent. Sure. Uh, earlier, if, if like, you know, uh, uh, when there was a question of, um, you know, a person has got a cough or a cold and if I don't have those feature extraction, mm-hmm. if I don't put that DNN part of it, uh, what will happen is that my system will say reject that person, even if he's, you know, a valid user. Right. True. Um, another question is what, what if the voice is modified by a sort of cyber attack or how so it's a synthetic, that's a synthetic attack, which I've been, I've been saying. So synthetic uh, attacks are being taken care of, mm-hmm. uh, one by the live detection, what we are doing, the, the, the noise cancellation, which are there and the geolocation. Right. Right. So the geolocation is a, is a big one there uh, in that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, what if I was traveling, right? I mean, uh, you know, I live in Delhi primarily, but now I'm, I'm traveling, I'm in Chennai and I make a call. Would that cause a problem to such a system? No, it will not be. Uh, the geolocation is to come to know where the user is. Right. So, I mean, uh, how would you differentiate between a scenario where, uh, you know, somebody has done a cyber attack of some kind or is using AI? So, to- so, so, so it, it's like this. One thing I have to tell you here. Uh, here we talk of the deep fakes, uh, you know, uh, yes. uh, the cyber attack in, in case of the deep fakes, and yes. we try to uh, do a create a synthetic voice uh, that is the generator versus the discriminator, and try to reach to the most accuracy. But yeah. the frequency of that person, I may I may change the amplitude, uh, I may modulate the way uh, even Barack, uh, Barack Obama will speak or a, uh, Mark Zuckerberg will speak, right. you know. But the the frequency which is there of his I will not be able to, you know, uh, play that frequency role uh, mm-hmm. in the synthetic voice. So that is where, you know, the deep neural network, again, is very important. The, the deep learning uh, of uh, any, any uh, sample. So, I mean, uh, but can you see a scenario where, uh, you know, you could have an attack on, on such a system where you're continuously trying to give them information and get back responses where, uh, you know, slowly you're tweaking uh, the voice to See, it, uh, I, I, I will say uh, there are chances. I will not negate it. I will not say that it, this is 100% uh, uh, you know, secure. Yes, mm-hmm. the security is higher. But you know, as we grow, this technology is growing. We will, we will see all the hackers also getting active to create the synthetic voice mm-hmm. uh, of different people to get onto it. So mm-hmm. I will not negate it. But right. yes, uh, you know, uh, definitely it may, it may happen. And that's a bonus, right? Because that keeps us in jobs, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So this, this is an evolving technology. And uh, uh, to tell you, because you know it, how the hackers are getting into all the deep fakes also. So sure. uh, that's what they're doing. The, the synthetic voice, which has been created, is uh, almost the same. Uh, very difficult at times. If you really don't have a biometric system, uh, which is not that accurate, you will land up with that kind of a problem. Right, right. And like we are today at a 94% accuracy and a rejection ratio of 0.1%. So uh, we are trying to go up to 96% accuracy or 97% accuracy to say that this is the person. And if this person, the, the voice doesn't match, we have to reject it. Hmm. So, and where we started, it was just 70% or 80%. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is a very evolving uh, uh, systems what we have, what I've been created. Sure. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, 94% is great, right? And uh, of course, one of the things that we get all the time now is that uh, everybody's trying to suggest that 94% is not enough. Uh, what do you think is enough for, for this to really uh, be a production system? I mean, I, I know you've shown examples so, where banks are agreeing to use this, but 
Yes, so it's, I feel 95% of the book mm-hmm. uh, is going to be a big up, uh, a good bet. Okay, okay. Uh, there are other questions on impersonation and emotion detection and, and you know, all of those, but I guess you've already kind of addressed those. Uh, do you have any concerns regarding GDPR, for example, with more devices able to capture audio? How do we ensure people's privacy or protect voice data from being shared with organizations like law enforcement, etc.? So GDPR is always going to be a challenge with us uh, because uh, if the data is going to be you know stolen or the voice samples are taken away then it will be a problem always uh, mm-hmm. gdpr is it's because what is happening is you have to understand uh, the implementation model is like it's got a server where we have the libraries which are there they're the agents there's a fraudster agent okay and uh, uh, we do have uh, the kind of you know the library which keeps on running uh, you know throughout to identify the user okay Hmm. And the other thing is uh, the samples, the voice samples, which are being created for each and every one. So generally a text dependent uh, one is a smaller file uh, we create because we really, uh, it, it's really matching to the, uh, the fast, fast phase what we are giving. It is around uh, 150 kilobytes. Okay. Whereas the text independent is around 1 MB or it's around 800 kilobytes of uh, the file which has been created. So mm-hmm. those are the databases which are being generated for each and every user. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that is how we are able to, you know, uh, run through each uh, file altogether to mm-hmm. uh, extract the data out of it. Mm-hmm. So it will be a concern. The GDPR will be a concern to us. Sure. And, you know, you, you mentioned Siri and, uh, you know, other similar uh, Alexa and on all of these, uh, you know, devices that are there. Uh, now, obviously, that's an opportunity for, uh, you know, this technology to be used more widely, but also it's a threat in some ways, isn't it? Because, you know, it means that uh, uh, the private companies have a lot of uh, voice data uh, that is, you know, right. be hackable and you're getting access to a lot of such data. Uh, and that helps then the fake, uh, you know, the deep fakes to be created. So, um, you know, how how do we balance these two things? Um, so defects will be a problem always and uh, like we are all aware uh, defects are happening and it's a very live problem which is available to us so those kind of challenges will always uh, take place with uh, this kind of you know uh, system hmm. Hmm. okay so uh, that uh, but but definitely one thing which is there is that uh, if the if the data is safe if you are able to you know secure the data properly uh, uh, chances of you losing the data uh, will be very, very less. Sure. Okay. Um, Nikhil Bajaj is asking a question. I mean, in your example, you had talked about, you know, asking the name and the date of birth of um, the person uh, to start off with. How uh, important is that as part of the verification process? I mean, you know, could you be asking random, uh, you know, questions instead? Yes. So, so there are, there are two methods of asking. I showed you a text. You know, uh, independent kind of thing where a person is being told to speak. Okay. Mm. Uh, the case in point that uh, a call center person asks you a couple of questions and you try to, you know, uh, analyze him because you have the text independent data with you. Okay. And uh, you have started, you know, taking out the samples. You're going to, uh, the agent really works well and talking it out. The mm. second is that uh, a much more interesting would be a text dependent where uh, you are being told because. Here is the thing, which is uh, which somebody was ask, also asking question. If there's a synthetic voice, so yeah. in the case of a synthetic voice, mm-hmm. like you know, you you have a recorded audio mm-hmm. of your name, number, everything which is there. Now I ask you a, a very typical question. How do you answer that? Okay, mm-hmm. so that verification process uh, to break through would be much more difficult. Right. So the synthetic voice, when we say, you know, it will be very interesting. Anybody can record and you know play back the same uh, uh, voice uh, for the bank or someone. But if I ask you a very driven question and those questions are random. Mm. Okay. So uh, then it, it becomes difficult for that synthetic voice to really add back. Right. Right. And that is the kind of uh, edge uh, voice biometric uh, gives. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, another question is age related. Um, you know, so somebody you know over fifteen years yes. as a customer. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, so, so your your modulations will change your frequency, which I was trying to show you. Yes. That won't change. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so that is the one which keeps on uh, you know staying with you throughout. Okay. So no recalibration is required as such. Uh, so definitely, see, it's like this. Uh, you know, you may like to recalibrate after five years, ten years. Because uh, uh, when your age may be around 60, your your voice starts getting shaky. Hmm. Okay, that's hmm. always the case. So, uh, but the frequency levels are definitely um, the same. Uh, you, we may recalibrate uh, a person after five years to ten years. Hmm. Uh, it's that will be always a good part to do it. Right. Right. Okay. It it's the same thing. Like your your fingers. You know, if you're beyond 65. Uh, all the marks of your finger really, you know, start fading off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no fair point. Um, and then the, the final question here is, uh, we've all be, uh, already talked about multimodal biometrics. So, uh, you know, if the voice doesn't match, another kind of verification may be uh, applied. Uh, is that the way uh, implementations are happening in industry? Or is it really, I mean, are people looking at a complete switch from one to the other? It uh, see, it's like this. Uh, like I told you, uh, what what the industry is looking at right now, uh, the finger bi the biometrics is really uh, the big out from uh, the industry. Suddenly, it mm -hmm. got faded away because of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. and uh, people are trying to switch on to the other methods of uh, biometrics. Uh, mm -hmm. And facial recognition has been catching up uh, very quickly, which everybody is seeing it, and they. Since it has to be a multi-factor authentication for anyone, uh, and uh, the second option, which is there, is a voice biometric. So mm -hmm. that is how the multimodal biometric will play a major role in times to come. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, you know, just from a simple uh, connectivity issue, right? I mean, uh, data. Uh, you know, we we're all seeing a spike in use of data. You know, it's getting more unreliable. Uh, I presume you can handle all of that, uh, you know. Uh, yes, yes, it, it can, it can. Uh, you know, uh, even if a person is just speaking from his, you know, feature phone, you really don't have a smartphone uh, if you're doing your voice biometrics. Even if it's a feature phone, uh, that kind of uh, uh, things can be handled. Okay, brilliant. And uh, if, you, if you've seen that, you know, uh, one of the slides where I was trying to say that the input is a waveform, so even if you're trying to talk uh, from your GSM or your LTE phone or the normal uh, phones which are there, uh, the wave format uh, that is around 4.8 kilobytes per second, if you are, have the, the kind of uh, quantization, uh, that will work pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much, sir, uh, for uh, taking out more time than we had uh, uh, asked uh, for answering all of these no. questions. I think this has been a very interesting um, talk and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think from the uh, volume of questions I've seen coming in, uh, I think a lot of um, uh, the, the listeners have really enjoyed this as well. And uh, thank you very much. And I hope um, that, uh, like I said earlier at the start of this talk, that uh, we would be able to coax you to come back and speak to us uh, again sometime. Sure. And sure enough. The talk on deep fakes that you're doing later today for, for yeah. an organization, you know, I think would be lovely for, for you to cover um, here at some point too. So we look forward to Definitely. interactions with you. And again, thank you, uh, you know, very much for this very engaging talk. Thank you. The pleasure is mine and I really enjoyed uh, with the questions. And it was very interesting, you know, to get good questions. So that's more important at times. So, uh, you know, you really have to reply to those questions as well. Yes. Thank you, sir. Right. And uh, definitely uh, we'll plan for a deep fake and it's wonderful to be with everyone. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, any queries, do ping me offline, online, I'm available. So it will be wonderful to interact with you, all of you, uh, individually or uh, through uh, Surabjot. So it's fantastic. So, Thanks. Thanks. We will, we've actually recorded this session and we'll be making it available on our platform for uh, students in the future also to listen to. And uh, right. so if there are any resources that you think a student that's learning about uh, the subject that you can share, right. be more than happy to it's, it's a really, it's an it's a area to research right now. Like I told you, everybody was doing facial recognition. They lost on this opportunity of voice biometrics. 
Hmm. That's a huge area to work on. Yeah, yeah, uh, great. And like, there's a market which is fantastic. I think uh, in times to come, it can be a big business line for all the researchers and the people who are working in this area. Yeah, uh, brilliant. And I, you know, I guess a closing question is this: a, uh, is this a make in India product? I mean, has it been built up from scratch, or is this uh, you know using? So it's it's a partially it's it's a it's a partial uh, make in India. Uh, so I am I am doing the most of the customization. The base engine is a, a Russian engine, okay. uh, which is there, mm-hmm. and uh, the customization part uh, to reach out to the Indian industry is mine. So a lot of uh, the mindset has been uh, put in by myself to uh, make it work uh, to the Indian environment. Wonderful, wonderful. So thank you so much, sir. And uh, like I said, we look forward to having you again as a as a speaker uh, on our session uh, yeah. in the near future. Thanks. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.